guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Cosmic Run Mining Colony, in which you'll be playing one to two players, about 30 minutes for a game, and ages 14 and up. In the game Cosmic Run Mining Colony, you're basically going to be placing down bets or bids and flipping them over and then if you are successful you'll be taking the first choice to place a tile onto your board. There's characters that you're going to get to place on your board, there's, there's different ships, you're going to be able to place different gems. These things are going to produce things like towers and factories and basically as you go on you're going to be building this board up. Eventually after the last round you're going to count up all of each color type of thing you have on the board and claim victory points based on if you have the most or not. And if it's a tie, you won't claim any of it. Uh, whoever has the mi most victory points at the end of the game is going to be the winner. A pretty simple tableau management game with some unique twists and a two-player competitive aspect to it. Let's go and take a look down below at uh, Stephen Games. Mining Colony. So here we have Mining Colony and everything included in the game. You're going to have your gems, your ships, your people. You're also going to have these little towers here and your little factories that you're going to be scoring as you're placing down on your tableau. Got your little secondary area in which you can be able to place things from here to here, but never from here to here. In addition, there is additional spaces to be placed down here. Two wild spaces, a place for your ships, and a place for your people. That is going to be the same for everything you place on the board, but there are certain exceptions like these have a specific color on them sometimes, in which case you can only place gems on them of that color. But regardless, these can be played for any ships and these can be played for any people. You also got 10 cards in your hand. You get to start with them and look at them. It's just going to be one through 10. These are what you're going to use to bid throughout the game. You're also going to take each of these little stacks here and shuffle them up and then place them in their allocated spaces. Along with this deck here, you will shuffle and you will discard two of them. And then these will be the five rounds of the game that you will be playing. To begin the game, it's pretty simple. You'll take one of these cards here and place it down and then Based on what it says, you're going to go ahead and go to this pool here and place the requirements out. So in this one here, it's going to be a three, a green, and a white. In the two here, it's going to be a white. It's going to be one of these red ships here and a singular one piece. Over here in this three area is going to be one of these guys here. It's going to be a white and then a purple. And then we've got this big five here along with a yellow and a red there. Okay, now this is all set up. And as you can see here, there is going to be little arrows pointing to players. There's two portions to this round. There's this side and then there's this side. If during this portion of the round, uh, there's a tie, this player is going to win the tie. And if it, there's a portion on this side where it's a tie, this player will win the tie. At which point everybody is going to look at their hand. They're going to then choose a card to place down and secretly. And then you're going to go ahead and uh, flip them after you've placed them and determine the winner. The highest is going to win the round for this portion. Seven beats a two. Discard these cards. This player will go first and choose this one or this one. The one space or the two taking everything they can. When you take, you're going to get everything. You're going to place it and make sure it's adjacent to a, one of these uh, dark orange spaces or adjacent to one of the pieces you've already played. Then you can take these. You can place them on the board instantly or you can place them over here. Now, if you do that, of course, there's a limit to one per space. And once you take, once you put here, if you place from here to here, you can do that. But once you've placed it, so if I have one over here, I'd place it over here. I cannot move that piece once it's placed. So I'm making sure you can try and follow the rules as best as possible. I'll put a white one there and I'll put a green one there because these two are wild. That's a yellow though. And this one here is for a ship. This player over here is going to get the little one piece, place it down on their board. They've got a little ship that they'll place on and they've got this white piece that they can go ahead and save for later. Then the next portion of the round is going to begin, in which case every single player will look at their hand again, determining what they want based on uh, the cards they want to play. Maybe they really want this space, so he'll play something big. Maybe this player does not care what he gets, so he'll play something small. And uh, let's see if I can find something really tiny here. Okay, one. And then you're going to go ahead and once again flip over. This player is going to win again, taking this big piece here and then positioning it anywhere on the board as long as it occupies the side uh, of either one of these dark orange areas. He's also got this little red piece here he can place there. And he's got this yellow piece. This yellow piece can go down instantly, which is nice. And so he is done. And the next player is going to get a chance. He's going to go ahead and take this here. He has no options. And he's going to go ahead and place it down once more 
four. He's got two cubes here. He'll save one here and one here. If you cannot place a token at the end of the turn, it's or, or a ship or anything like that, it's going to go. It gets removed. So make sure when you're bidding, you know what you're picking because you could potentially lose out on pieces that you gain. After that is done, the next round will begin. You'll draw another one of these cards here, and then you'll go ahead and place these down here, and players are gonna keep going building onto their board. Eventually, the board is going to get as filled up as you possibly can. All of these cards will be exhausted, and your board's gonna look something nice. Um, something you know pretty big actually if you're lucky enough right and then you're going to score these guys here now before we do explaining the scoring there are these little extra tokens here now how you get them is an interesting task the first thing you have to know is that you need in order to get these guys here to have the gems of the same color occupy two spaces adjacent to each other with a space in between. What I mean by that is simply like this. If I played this like that on my turn and I happen to have one white there and I got one white from the bid, I'd place one white there, I'd place one white here, and then I'd get this for free and I'd place it in the middle. That works for every single tower and it's basically going to give you a bonus to white at the end of the game for scoring. There's only one of each though. And the way this works is the person who won the match or the person who won the tie based on which of the rounds it is, is gonna be one who places this first, in case both players had white to place down to score this tower. These guys work basically the same way. There is one exception, one, one difference to this rule, and that's gonna be based on, uh, I'll, I'll show you right now, actually. I'll flip over one of these guys and show you if I can find one. This is perfect. In this case, let's say I had this guy on this here, and I also had one of these dudes right there. I'd place this factory right in the middle. It's basically got to have one meeple and one ship on each side with a space in between of the same color, and you'll get an, a factory of that color. And that is how these guys work. They're basically like bonus things you can get for making your board nice. Then, now, uh, that's, that, that, now that's explained, I can explain scoring. After all these rounds are done, you're going to score. Who has the most blue? Blue, they'll get this point. Who has the most red, they'll get this point. If there's a tie, no one gets it. And after all of these have been distributed based on who won each of these based on the color, and of course these count as part of the colors, then you're going to go ahead and subtract spaces based on the ones that you, you did not place on. So one, two, and three, and four would be for this guy. And depending on the number he had over there would be four, four or five, whatever he had, he would subtract from his score. So in this case, because he has four extras, he's gonna lose four points and he'll have a total of three points in the, the game. And something similar would happen to this guy as well. And that's basically how it works. The person who has the most points at the end of the game of, co of the Cosmic Run Mining Colonies is going to win. Pretty simple two-player tactical tableau placement game. All right, let's come up and I'll tell you what I think about it. So what do I think about the game Cosmic Run Mining Colony? Well, this game is excellent. It's very, very good. In fact, all of Dr. Finn Games games have been very, very good in my opinion. He's got, uh, he did help with Herbaceous. He has the Flower Shop game. He's got the original Cosmic Run. And then of course now this one here and all of them I really, really liked and everybody I've played with have also really, really liked those games. Herbaceous is probably the most popular of the games he's helped design, but I personally like the Flower Shop over that one, I think. I know my wife now does. However, these are all quite different, right? Especially this one here. This is just a two-player game. You go back and forth with the tableau placement. It's really fun. It's a really quick, quick game, and it's really easy to teach, as, as you can see. It was very simple, and I think you probably get the idea game just based on my little uh, example there. You could probably play the game instantly without having to do anything other than watch this video. But it's got a lot of strategy. It's got a lot of choices to make based on the cards you want to play. And half of it is gonna be kind of your fault as to the placement you make on the board and which one of these little towers you take and how you take them to score points as well as watching what your opponent is taking. It has a little bit of a patchwork feel as well as a little bit of a bidding mechanism attached to it or like simple you know, flipping them over and determining who wins. Then there's another interesting aspect that I actually thought I wasn't going to like and Grant also thought I wasn't going to enjoy was the tie system where one and two will go to one player and the three and four area will go to the other player in which case if we both played a four on the one two section I would win because I'm on this side and vice versa for the other side for a grant uh, I actually really like that because it made me deduce when I wanted to play what number of cards of, of my cards and when I played them debating on which pieces I needed the most of. Do I want that big piece? Do I want to fill in the gap with the small piece? Well, the small pieces generally will give you some certain specific thing, which will additionally let you get something like a tower or whatnot if you've played well enough. But 
mainly everything is kind of your fault. There's a little bit of chance as to who places what down, but overall, uh, I like that aspect as well in this game. This game is a solid, definite pickup for my, in my opinion, if you like two player games. That's my one critique about this game is it's only for two players. I would like to see this game actually have more players. Maybe they'll have something in the future. Maybe they'll include that. I don't know how that's gonna work, but I think it could work with more players, just adding additional spots on the board because that really, really is what interests me is having multiple players around. But for a two player game, this is definitely up there, uh, specifically this year right now, as far as the two player games I've played, this is probably my favorite one of the bunch of two player games I've played this year. Yeah, I'd probably say that just because of how quick and simple it is, it's very easy to get out there. It's partial gateway, but it's also partial s s serious strategy. Uh, it, you know, it, it's close. It's definitely close. But overall, very, very enjoyable game. If you want to take a look at it down below in the description, it's going to be on Kickstarter for Dr. Finn Games. Mining Colony. It's not a set. It's not a second game from the original Cosmic Run. It's a completely unique game all on its own. So those of you who enjoy two-player games are going to get a kick out of this one. The components are nice. The quality is nice. I like the artwork of the game. Just like all the rest of his games, expect the same kind of quality in this one as well. Definitely, definitely. Seal of approval from Unfiltered Gamer. This one is really, really good, and I am very excited to see what it looks like when it is fully done. Thanks, guys outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos. Tune YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, as well as taking a look at Cosmic Run Mining Colony. It's a really fun one. And all I heard to mention, too, you can play this game single player. I generally don't play single player games unless they're specifically made as a single player game, but this one, I can see people playing it. I personally did not play this game single player because I wanted to get this review out, and I played it a lot of times two players, but I didn't have time to sit down and actually play it. I guess I could have, but it's been a really busy Busy, busy time. Uh, overall though, for two players, I really recommend it. I think it actually worked pretty well for a single player. I don't think it would change a whole lot, just other than the computer's gonna be taking certain things and you're gonna work on a solitaire aspect of this game. As well as taking a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to also go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek, tons of great giveaways and stuff like that as well, as our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 PST, PM, uh, and you can win games. We're gonna be giving away games on our live stream. It'll be a lot of fun. I think you guys will enjoy it. We've been really ranking it up there and uh, people have been really having a lot of good, good fun. We've given away a, a bunch of games lately, the last couple weeks here. So come join us. All right guys, thanks for watching. And as always, I look forward to creating a mining colony with you next time.